To keep New Zealand's biggest industry working efficiently, young farmers must be encouraged, taught and trained. Many keen young men who live in the towns have been lost to agriculture because they've never made the contacts or had the opportunity to receive guidance and proper instruction. the Canterbury Farm Training Council was set up to help boys who were not farmers' sons learn practical farming. Under this scheme, they undertake a four-year cadetship. From their farmer tutors, they gain experience in sheep, dairy and mixed farming. One cadet has started his training on a mixed farm near Rangiora, the owner being his teacher. For two years, he'll work here before specialising for a year with cows, then sheep. Another works first on a sheep farm near Ashburton. He already finds he likes working with sheep and when his training is completed, his ambition is to become a manager on a sheep farm. The quality of fleeces varies and he learns from his farmer instructor which ones are likely to bring top prices at the sale. Lambing is finished and the cadet works as a fleecer in the shearing shed. Correct handling of a fleece is important as sloppy work on the skirting table brings down the price and that wool check is the farmer's income for the year. generally 16 or 17 when they join the scheme and as they must have three years secondary education it's usually their first job. Therefore their progress and welfare are carefully watched. One of the officers of the Christchurch Vocational Guidance Centre visits the farms regularly to see how the cadets, most of them from the cities, are settling down and to discuss any problems they may have. A vital part of the scheme is learning the economics of farm management. Farmers are encouraged to discuss with the lads prospective returns from crops they've just planted and share with him decisions for the future. A farmer's son, if he decides to make a living on the land, automatically learns from his farming environment. These city boys, keen to become efficient farmers, learn by becoming part of the family. And the farmer often finds he has another son for a time. receive a wage and do the same jobs as other farm workers. About half of the cadets go on to a course at Lincoln Agricultural College, but while he's on the farm, he must work as well as the next man. The New Zealand farmer must be a jack of all trades and a master of many of them as well. Being part-time engineer, mechanic, carpenter, veterinarian and accountant, as well as a farmer, takes a lot of training. But it's not all work on the farm. The cadets go along with their employers to field days, shows and stock sales. In this way, they meet other farmers and learn what points to look for when buying stock. Most important when they come to farm for themselves. The South Island bull sale is a big event in the dairy calendar, and much can be learned here. The city boys who become Canterbury farm cadets and complete the course will finish well on the way to being fully trained practical farmers, ready to carry on New Zealand's most vital industry. Visiting Tauranga is a party of Japanese fishing experts here to demonstrate modern commercial fishing techniques and equipment that are in wide scale use in Japan. 150 commercial fishermen and company representatives are to watch the demonstration from three observer vessels. The 
towering a vessel Valkyrie has been specially converted to demonstrate the use of an immense per saint net. The Valkyrie is hitched to another boat in preparation for the surrounding of a school of fish. A surface shoal of small fish indicates larger fish below and the tow line is released to begin feeding the net overboard. Leaving the end of the net attached to the other vessel, the Valkyrie begins to encircle the show. On rejoining the other launch, the bottom of the net is pulled in together to form a huge purse. Then the net and its catch is hauled aboard. But there's no luck this time. However, the exercise is mainly a demonstration in technique and from the onlooker's point of view, it's a real success. Later, on a cricket ground in Tauranga, the net is laid out for a few minor repairs. No ladies' hairnet this one. It measures 2,100 feet long by 180 feet deep and weighs six tons. But until New Zealand obtains vessels capable of handling such a net, the fishermen will have to stick to the small-scale methods. Also on the program is a demonstration of the long line method to be used for catching snapper. The hooks are arranged and baited neatly along the sides of a box, making the release of the line a simple and efficient operation. There are 14 men in the Japanese party, each representing some aspect of the Japanese fishing industry. After some time, the line is returned to and hauled aboard. This system is used by Japanese commercial fishermen working off New Zealand's coasts. Another net technique is the mid-water trawl. As this net is being towed behind the launch, its position in the water can be controlled by devices known as doors, which can regulate the depth of the net. Echo sounding equipment aboard the ship picks out the schools of fish below, and a depth sounder on the net itself allows the men on board to control the depth to which the net goes. With this system, modern electronics have done away with traditional guesswork. The most successful new method shown in the demonstrations is that of the four-seam trawl. This is a large net which trawls the ocean floor, engulfing everything in its path. Of the nine new techniques, it is seen to be the best so far for local conditions. The Japanese demonstrations have proved their worth to New Zealand fishermen. But before most of these techniques can be put into practice, we must enlarge our own facilities to take full advantage of a primary industry which has as yet hardly been touched.